The fat pads of the face or the muscles of the face? Which are more important for portraiture? First, let me get this out of the way. I believe that the anatomy of the skull is the first and most important thing for us to understand before we get into the squishy, fleshy features of the face. The skull is the solid foundation that we build the fleshy features on top of. And once you have an understanding of the skull, then we can move on and get an understanding of the other anatomical forms. With that out of the way, let's consider the muscles of the face. If you've looked into the anatomy of the facial muscles at all, then you quickly realize just how many muscles there are and how complicated this part of the anatomy of the face is. I mean, just look at the bucolabial group of muscles that surround the mouth. Bucolabial, more like buco loco, because it's crazy how many muscles there are around the mouth. And then on top of that, all of these muscles of the face have weird Latin names like the orbicularis oculi. What is it? What the heck is it? I can't even remember. That's how, that's how complicated it is. I have to look at my phone just to remember the name of the levator labii superioris alicanasi. The zygomaticus major, I mean, I'm the instructor for the course. I don't even know if I'm saying these right. That's how complicated they are. So there are a lot of muscles that make this magic happen. This magic that you're witnessing right now that is made possible by the muscles of the face. So surely they're important, you'd think. But there's something I realized when going over the premium lessons on the anatomy and all of the muscles of the face. While these muscles do determine the facial expressions that are very easy to see, there are very few of these muscles that are actually noticeable on the surface of the face, even when flexed. What we notice is how the muscles affect the skin. Some of the muscles that you might see on some models are the masseter and the temporalis muscle right here. But other than that, most of the muscles of the face are only noticeable in the way that they move the skin of the face during expression. And then even during facial expressions, you don't see these muscles flex in the same way that you might see the bicep flex. This is because the facial muscles are attached to fleshy features in the face, especially the muscles that are used in facial expressions. And so because it's not a bone to bone attachment, you don't need as much muscle mass to move those features. In fact, those muscles that I mentioned that you might see, those of the masseter and the temporalis, those are the muscles of the face that actually do go from bone to bone. They go from the skull to the jawbone or the mandible and they're involved in chewing. So these muscles have a little bit more mass to them. Many of the fat pads of the face, on the other hand, are almost always visible, even if they're subtle. And yet, as an artist, I haven't found as many lessons that focus on these fundamental facial features of the fat pads of the face. The fat pads of the face help to protect the face and they also facilitate in the movement of the muscles of the face during facial expressions. The fat pads of the face typically become more prominent as you age, as the skin becomes less tight, and the fat pads themselves shrink and move down, pulled by gravity and the inevitable march of time, pulling your face down towards the ground as you age it's coming for all of us. This makes the separation between the fat pads more prominent and more obvious and creates wrinkles and valleys in between the fat pads. But even in young people that have less fat in their face, these fat pads are still noticeable and they contribute to the fleshy forms of the face far more than the muscles do. Once I became aware of these fat pads, I started to notice them in everyone around me. Everybody's face just all of a sudden turned into just fat pads. I've especially noticed the impact of these fat pads when it comes to the faces of babies. It's cute, squishy, squish, squishy, squishy babies. These squishy babies are just made up of fat pads. For example, the eyes of babies are extremely influenced by the superior and inferior orbital fat pads, the fat pads of the eye socket. And even with the soft, tight skin of babies, you can often see the transition between the fat pads very softly on the cheeks. Probably the most noticeable fat pads are usually the nasolabial fat pad, this fat pad right here that contributes to the nasolabial crease, this crease. So the nasolabial fat pad is up here, starts just above the nostrils, ends 
just above the corners of the mouth on the outside of the nodes of the mouth. In addition, the fat pads of the face seem to have names that tend to be a little bit easier to remember. For example, the middle cheek fat pad is the fat pad that's in the middle of the cheek. That makes sense to me. Middle cheek fat pad, oh, it's in the middle of the cheek. None of this Latin. There's probably a Latin name for it. In the premium lesson on the muscles of the face, we went over 23 muscles. 23 different muscles. But in the lesson of the fat pads, there's only 13. I guess that's, that's still a lot. So after considering both of these anatomical forms, the anatomy of the muscles and the anatomy of the fat pads, I have determined that the fat pads are actually more important to understand for portraiture. So while the muscles of the face are twice as numerous and twice as complicated, I feel that they're only half as important as the fat pads of the face when it comes to drawing, painting, or sculpting, especially sculpting, the portrait. Let it be decreed, Andrew Joseph Keith has spoken, it's settled. Fortunately for you, you don't have to choose between learning about the muscles of the face or the fat pads of the face because in the premium course, we're gonna be going over both in depth. So I guess this video was really unnecessary. If you'd really like to master the portrait, go over to proco.com slash portrait sculpt and sign up for the premium course. The full course has additional lessons, demos, assignments, critique videos, and more. So I hope to see you over there at proco.com slash portrait sculpt. Come join us and the thousands of other students that are learning the principles of art over at proco.com. Stay creative, stay productive. I'll see you in the next video.